good evening. We're traveling today, and I'll just say there's nothing like a ring light, but Kelly did have kind of an ingenious idea about setting up this setup with the light on the wall. I would show you, but I would have to tear the whole thing down to show you, so I'm not going to show you. Anywho, uh, we're traveling, and today at the airport, I saw a woman doing a Sudoku puzzle because I don't know, every, people do them, right? It's like also just a thing that you do in the airport for some reason or on the airplane or whatever. Like it's just a thing that people do. Just like people play crossword puzzles or they play games on their phone or they do other similar things. And I just thought, you know, like Sudoku is not, it's not mind, it's not mindless in a sense, right? It requires to the best of my knowledge, some mental activity. And I think some people do it like the advanced versions because they want a challenge. I know that the one or two times, maybe 10 years ago, I tried playing it. It was because I wanted a challenge. I wanted to challenge my brain. I wanted, you know, to use my mind for something kind of fun, kind of entertaining. And it just made me think like, why is that woman doing that when she could be creating something? Cause I was there on my laptop and I was writing and, and then I thought, oh, well Lauren, she's not doing that for the same reason that you didn't do it for 35 to 40 years of your life, which is that you didn't think you were creative enough. You didn't think that you had anything so amazing to share. And it was just so interesting to look at her and think, Oh, well, I wonder if she would, like, what would she create if she was going to create something? She was just an average looking woman. I frankly don't remember at all what she looked like. But I just remember the idea that every single person who was sitting in that little lobby waiting for the airplane to let us on. It's not called a lobby at all. It's called a gate. And everyone sitting in the, at that gate, well, like, if every one of those people would create something from their heart, from their mind, like... Wouldn't that be so interesting? And don't you find it fascinating how other people's creations are interesting to you, but then you refuse to understand that your creations are interesting to other people just because they are, just because you're human, just because creating something takes a, an initiative. It takes an energy. It takes a certain, it takes something. And that's why I guess everybody sitting at that gate wasn't doing some sort of creation. But I also just remembered and connected with how I used to feel about myself as a creator, as an artist. I just remember, I don't remember the context, but I remember at some point reading something and it was about being an artist or a creator. And I just thought, that's not me. That's not who I am. Like I don't really create things, which is nonsense because everybody creates things and everybody like, you know, Sorry, I have to block some robots. There's robots invading my video. So everybody is a creator. Every single one of you is a creator. And you may not be doing a lot of creating, but you know, someone said to me one time, one of my clients I think said something about, well, how can I be a writer if I'm not writing? I'm like, well, you're gonna be real neurotic about it and you're gonna be probably pretty unhappy and find ways to take it out in your life in other areas, you're going to cause conflict so that you can have some, like, uh, some hill to climb and then some peak to summit and then you're going to go back down the other side of the hill and you're going to cause another drama because you're not doing the thing that you are actually meant to do. And every single person is a creator and every single person is interesting. Every single other human being is is interesting to other people. Like you, you are interesting to other people. Just in the same way, partly out of like, you know, kind of like, whoa, just like maybe even a little bit of morbid fascination. Like everybody's lives are interesting to everybody else. Even if they're really different or like weird or odd or quirky or even pretty normal, like, People want, well, look, look at what reality TV has done to our society. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that? Because we find other people's bullshit, just their normal stuff. We find it interesting. 
Now there's a whole focus on drama, but the drama only comes up, like all the interpersonal drama aspect of reality TV. That's simply because people are not creating things. They have to create drama on those shows because the people are not creating things. Like, so because you are interesting to other people, you could have that knowledge and you could use it to decide to create something. And you may think, I don't know what I would create. Well, you could create some kind of art. You are creating a lot of things anyway in the world, even just by default, even if you don't recognize it. You're creating a whole atmosphere when you walk into a room, whether that's positive or negative. You're creating conversations that you have and that you perpetuate with the people in your life. You're creating like a mood sometimes in your family or at your workplace. You are creating always. You're always also creating who you are. So what if you just created that you are a creator? Because you are. So you could start consciously creating. Because when you consciously create, you can give up that part of your mind that's like, gets really antsy when you're not consciously creating, when you're not using up that energy. That part of your mind is like, we gotta do something. We might have to cause a big conflict with spouse, or this is time for like major disruption with child, or it's like, you know, you just, you, you create these problems when you're not doing the thing, the thing that would actually fulfill you, the thing that would actually keep you busy at the airport gate instead of Sudoku, 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 I don't know how you pronounce it exactly. This is not exactly anything against Sudoku, but it's, a symptom of something that we are doing so much more consuming than we are creating. And I know that some see that I think the trick of, of good entertainers is that they make you feel like you are creating something in the process of consuming their content. So Sudoku is like a, you know, it's, it's not just, you're not just passively like receiving the, the consumptive energy of like, it's not like you're just watching TV or whatever. You're actually involved, which is like definitely a step of creation. But there's this whole other level of creation that's like staring at a blank page and writing something, a song, a poem, a book, I don't know, a letter to someone or or singing a song or dancing or painting or making a beautiful meal. I don't know. It's not, there's no, there are no rules about this. This is not like creating can be anything. Some people, uh, we watched something last night where some guy fill, I think it was a dude. He like fills bubble wrap with paint. He like injects the bubble wrap with paint, every little freaking bubble and he makes a painting of it. And it's amazing. But like, there's, there are no rules in art, in creation. It is simply, and it's not about what final product you come up with. I used to just like be so dismissive of art and creation, mainly because it was so energetically difficult for me to like really, oh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna stare at a blank page until I come up with something. I was just so unsure that anything would ever happen that would be remotely fulfilling to me, that I didn't even wanna try. And I also probably didn't wanna be disappointed. And then I also thought that it was all about the outcome. It was all about the result that I would get. It, and then it was gonna be all about, is the result that I get good enough and do other people like it? Not good enough just for me, but do other people like it? And that's so not the point. And, but by the way, other people will like it so much more than you can imagine. Other people will be moved by it. Other people will just be moved by the fact that in this society, you're actually creating something and instead of just consuming passively all of the news and the media and the entertainment and the games and the things. But what I was going to say again is like that a really good creator, a really like a real entertainer creator who is creating something for other people's consumption. It's like if they can trick you into thinking you're actually the one doing the creative work, which means like in corp, it's why video games are so addicting in that sense is that like they are, they allow you to feel like a little bit like you are creating something like that's why Minecraft and all of those world building games became so popular because people do love to create. 
And it's one thing to build a Minecraft world, but what if you actually took that creative energy and you took it on a blank canvas? You put it on a blank canvas, metaphorically speaking. You didn't walk into someone else's computer generated reality and just like use the tools that were given to you. What if you actually created it from nothing? What if you decided what your kind of creation might be? What if you played around with painting? And I just used to dabble so much. I'd be like, oh yeah, like one day every five years I would get out some like watercolor paints and be like, I'm gonna be like Bob Ross, except fuck, Bob Ross uses acrylics and I don't now have to go to the store and I have to buy all the acrylics and then I have to buy all the brushes. And then I would use the brushes once and I wouldn't clean them and then they'd be ruined. And I was not, I didn't have a little thing to, you know, whack it off like Bob Ross. Just kidding. Uh, have you seen Deadpool? See, I like to consume other people's art too, but what I've really noticed as I've become more and more into my creative side is that when I consume art, when I consume other things, when I am in a consumptive mode, I'm really in it like watching for how it's done. I'm in it like I'm not just absorbed by it. I am like, whoa, look at what this, I'm conscious that it was created by another human being who frankly is no different than you are other than that's what they decided to do with themselves. In the process of writing a book, it's like, you think that there's some magic. Do you know how you learn to write a book? You write a book. I mean, that sounds so unhelpful. It sounds so stupid and it's, it's, it's a tautology. It's like, thanks so much for telling me that. But really, it's true. It's really the way that you learn all that there is to learn about writing a book. You just do the thing. You don't learn all the stuff and then do the thing. That's not how creation works. Creation works when, when you are willing to come to that metaphorically blank canvas, when you are willing to create the entire context of what you're gonna create even, when you are willing to create your own life, to recognize that you are the, already the creator of your own life and doing it by default and just by how you wound up being by the nature of whatever landed you in this moment right now watching this video, to do it that way is so different than to do it consciously, to do it with an awareness of that you are doing it, that you are creating it, that you have the power to create something different if you don't like what is going on right now in your creation. And first, you just have to recognize that you created all that, not in a way that involves any kind of guilt or shame or blame or, or bad and wrong or right and good. Like, it's not about any of that. It's not about morality. This is just about a place to stand and look at life. And it's the most powerful place to stand because it gives you actual access to something that can shift and change your circumstances. The alternative is to be a victim. And look, there's two, if there's two options, which there are, and one is to be a victim, and the other is to be empowered to have all the say about how your life goes, I don't know, I think it's pretty clear. I thought it was pretty clear when I really got to see that there were two options, that I was gonna choose the one that was way more empowering, that was way more enlivening, that gave me hope and power and access to create what I wanted instead of just what I wound up with. So I encourage you, like, I, I don't know, what I really connected with today is that, that like just five years ago, I was so in this conversation of like, I'm not creative, I'm not an artist, I'm not, oh yeah, I was a photographer, but not like that. And yes, I've been writing since I was, you know, in what, however early I could write, like, but yeah, not like that, right? I had all these reasons why my kind of creation wasn't real art or real creativeness. It was just like dabbling because it was dabbling. But the thing was, I made that like de definitional about who I was. No, that was just what I was doing or not doing. That wasn't who I was with relative to being an artist or being a creator. I am a creator, you are a creator, you are an artist, I am an artist, we literally all are. And not admitting that to yourself, not checking that out, not seeing what that means for you, not being willing to show up 
at a metaphorical blank canvas and decide what you're going to create. Choose to create something. Choose to, to, to try. I don't like that word, but in this case, it's like there can be just this like playfulness that you go and you just see. You might not have any freaking idea what you want to create or what you would like to create art for or what your what your medium is or what it's going to look like that's the whole point the whole point is the less you know about what it's going to look like the more amazing it is when you are willing to stand there in the face of that nothingness and choose and create and make the thing anyway that you have no idea what it is that you're going to make <laughs> like and the more the farther away you are from it the more rewarding it is to actually do it. Also, no doubt, the most resistance that you will have. I mean, there's resistance, like epic levels of resistance in being who you really are at every level. So don't expect that there won't be that. But the difference is, I used to think when I faced resistance, it was because, oh, well, I guess that just wasn't who I am. It's just not, it's not my nature. It's not like if those other people, they just go do the thing and they don't have any, they don't have any trouble. Like it's just who they are. Not at all, not for anyone. Like think of the person that you think of in your life that is like the most that person, right? That there's no way that they could ever not be that successful, that out there, that creative, that thing like that is just for you. When you look at them, you're like, damn, I mean, that person just wakes up and like the heavens align and the rainbows start happening and the sun rolls in perfectly and their hair is already wonderful. Like, I promise you that person is also human. Maybe, I mean, maybe you respect an automaton or something the most, I don't know. But if they're human, then they're having the experience of resistance and the only difference between you and them is that they chose to show up anyway. And then they got stronger. And then it happened again, and they chose to show up anyway, and then they got stronger. The resistance will always be there. And the bigger the project, the bigger the creation, the more the resistance. So, so every single artist, every single human that is in a creative endeavor in their life is facing this kind of resistance. You're, you're deluding yourself and you're cheating yourself if you believe anything else. Because that's some, that's some bullshit escape hatch that tries to tell a story about how those people who are doing the thing are different than you people. Okay, I'm back. We had a little internet outage in these parts. The creative energy was just too much for this phone. But here's the thing. You're not different. That makes you super special because you have the ability to create. You are human, you were born with it. It's just like tough shit, deal with it. You have everything that you need to create. The only question is, are you willing to walk into the, the darkness, to walk into the, the nothingness, to start, to begin before you know, to start before you feel ready, to make a choice knowing that you can always choose differently, that you are in control, knowing that you are creating and choosing no matter whether you're conscious of it or not, and that it's a lot more fun and powerful to be conscious of it and create the life that you desire. So that's, that's that. So it's like, are you playing Sudoku, 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 Sodoku? I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Sudoku, but I think it's spelled with a U and that just confuses me. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with doing those things. But the thing is that it's a slippery slope. And in this society, in this life, in this, all of it, it's like you are either very, very conscious of when you're in creative mode and when you're not, or you slip into constant never ending consumption. And then you have these moments of like, little bit of creativity required consumption, which is where I would classify Sudoku. And it's not a moral hierarchy for sure, but it is like a fulfillment hierarchy. And the level of fulfillment that you will feel when you walk into the unknown and create what there is to create for you is unparalleled. It's not, it's something that you don't know until you know it. It's something that I didn't know anything about until I 
until I got over my bullshit, until I gave up my stories about who I was or what kind of person I was or wasn't or what I was capable of or blah, blah, blah. And I just decided to show up. I chose to show up anyway, to show up, you know, it's like, you don't fake it till you make it. You be it until you see it, until it's very clear, until the whole world sees it. You just be that thing that you desire to be. It's not faking anything because there is no real you that isn't the thing that you desire to be. The whole fake it till you make it paradigm is an inaccurate paradigm because it presupposes that there is some truth of how you are or are not. And there isn't. There is a truth about how slow this Wi-Fi connection is. So I'm going to tell you good night, and I will see you tomorrow. And maybe by then you will have created something. I mean, you definitely will have created something. You'll have created almost a whole day, and I hope it's fantastic. Talk to you then.